So, you know, my, my message, because um, we, we had a, a FaceTime call, didn't we? Um, on a couple of FaceTime, maybe three FaceTime About calls. four or five, yeah, we've just been FaceTiming all the time. Um, but Monday, um, I had not a clue what to do it on. Tuesday, didn't have a clue. But I'd had this, uh, this message of perception in my head. That, you know, what do we perceive? How do we perceive things? Um, and it's all about, and then it changed to a little bit of like, kind of what is our purpose? Um, and we, we got preaching on, I think it was Psalm 19, and we'll go over that in a second. But I have these things that are principles in life. Um, like driving on the road. It's principle when someone, when you let someone go down, that they just say thank you. And when they don't say thank you, I get really angry at it. Like, I wish if I could go back 10 seconds, I wouldn't have let you through. I'd have just <laughs> kept going and then probably smiled at you, knowing I could have let you through, and then gone. Um, but I get really angry when it comes to, to driving. Um, uh, and even more so this week when I were, were preaching, that people who just go really slow on the roads annoy me. And it's probably because I'm always in a rush, absolutely everywhere I go. But even when I'm not in a rush, thing, people just frustrate me. I'm going to let you into something. It's probably not right, so I hope the authorities aren't watching. But pretty much, red means stop, amber means go, green means go. So when people <laughs> slow down at amber, I'm like, we could have got one more car through. We could have got one more. Um, got it wrong, though. Got it wrong. Yeah, pretty much. Um, get ready to go. It's just go, Paulie. It analogy. just means go. Like, you know when they slow... It just means go. And then them traffic lights as well that take you like 30 seconds to get through. Or you have to wait like two minutes. And I could have waited 10 seconds. We're not going to get into that right now. Um, next door neighbours. Or neighbours. Let's not talk about next door neighbours. Neighbours who park in front of your drive when they've got a drive. <laughs> it really frustrates me. And I'll get home from work and there'll be someone else. I've never seen the car before on my drive. No, not on my drive. Like in front and now I've got to go and park like five seconds down the road. And it takes me five more seconds to get home. To then be frustrated and tell my mum, who's that car out there? And we'll sit there all night and just look through the curtains. <laughs> and we'll be like, it's gone, it's gone, go and get your car. <laughs> For five seconds to save me in the morning. Um, people, people judge me as well when I cook. Mum and James have not been here for a full two weeks, which I would celebrate, but I'm so happy to have them back. Uh, but when I cook, Tasha, mum especially, will just intervene, turn the gas down. I want it high. Stop turning my stuff down. I'll get extra pans for stuff. Like, I put chicken, like, I'll cook it first, and I'll put it into another dish. You're just wasting dishes. You're just wasting dishes, just cook the chicken. I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning. I feel like none of you are on my page. <laughs> I feel like I'm just, <laughs> none of you agree with my frustrations. Well, I'll get you back, I'll get you back, mate. I'm going to try and throw, throw, a few more throw, throw a few more stones that may hit Facebook. I don't really use Facebook, I've only got it for Messenger. But people who put things on Facebook for attention, and then you ask them how they are, and they go, nah, it's all right, don't matter. Don't put it on then. <laughs> it frustrates me. And the, the whole part of this message, and loads of stuff has frustrated me this week as well. Because I knew that as I get up to preach, God would kind of test me on this stuff. So everything's just frustrated me this week. I'm <laughs> walking absolutely anywhere. Walking through Meadow Hall, and there's people in front of you, just go walk faster. Or they just stop and look at like window, look, window shopping. It frustrates me, and all that's happened. But then I realized what I can't control isn't my problem. And what I mean by that is there's certain things that, you know, once I've been driving, I've got to my destination. Realistic, that person not saying thank you has not changed my day at all. It's just frustrated me and taken me off the thought pattern of where we're going. Mm. My next door neighbour, when he, when he parks in front of my drive, realistic when I'm home and you know watching Arsenal win, as we did the other day, doesn't really matter. It's an extra five seconds for me to drive to walk up the road. These Facebook people who just rant and rave realistically, it's got nothing to do with me. And if it's someone close to me, yeah, maybe it'd be a bit more frustrating. But nine out of ten times, it's never someone I really care about. It's just frustrating that they know why they're doing it for a certain reason. And then Tech shared Psalm 19. And we're going to read into it and then try and take some little bits out of it. So it says Psalm 19. It says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. And day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. 
They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It burst forth like a radiant bridegroom um, after his wedding. It rejoices like an athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide him from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making him wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They're a warning um, to the servant and a great reward for those who obey him. How can we um, know all the sins lurk in our heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant um, from deliberate sins. Let them, don't let them control me and I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and my meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, um, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. After I read that and as I'd gone through my frustrations, I realized that God made us with purpose to honor him. And if you look around at nature and you look around, especially in Genesis with, with when he, he created the world, we were created with purpose. He gave instructions to the sky and to the, to, to the night and to the light. And without instructions, where would we be? If it wasn't for the moon, where would we be? And God gave specific instructions to nature. And as I, as I was reading through this, what we, God made us in a unique, unique way to make an impact. And if you look at, you know, the bees, you know, if they don't go off course, and if they did, we'd be in a mess. If it wasn't for the rain and for everything else that God made, we'd be in a, in a position where, where things just wouldn't work right. And I think that's the same for us. And, and I was reading a little bit in, in Genesis as well when it talks about um, uh, when it talks about Adam and Eve and they, they got given an instruction, don't eat from the tree. And I think sometimes it's the distractions that cause us to come away from God. It's the distractions that, you know, the things that we're told not to do that we do is the ones things that hold us from our purpose. And I look around in this amazing church, and I can honestly say it's amazing. I love absolutely yeah. every one of you. But there is, there is things that we've got, like a, a, a worship team, the, the, the prayer team, you know, the, the leadership teams, the coffee shop team, the media team, the welcome team. And you've all got these God-given gifts to do those things. But if we slowly started to move away from them and to get frustrated at other things, they don't get to thrive like they used to. If you look at the, the prophetic team, a lot of time and effort goes into to making sure that, you know, we're, we're on fire for God, that we're focused, that wherever we're going next to the church is, is where God wants us to go. But imagine if they just got, start getting frustrated about car parking outside. They just started walking in going, well, I can't quite get my words with God yet because whoever's parked that Persia out there, no one drives a Persia, do they? <laughs> um, whoever's parked that out there, um, uh, I can't worship now. I get distracted in worship. This is why I sit on the front row seats. Not because I, I want to be closer to, you know, whatever. I just get distracted. And I know that if I sit at the back and I'll moan or complain at why that person's done that or why that person's worshipping like that or why they're doing that. So I need to be in full in, in full mode so that when worship's time is my worship time so I can get the most from God. Um, like I said, it says you know, on verse 7, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are tr trustworthy, making wise the simple. God made everything for purpose and instruction. And like I said, nature, nature sticks to its instruction, so we should too. And I realize that we haven't got too long. I've, is, is this the right time, that up there, Tash? That's not like the full 30 minutes, is it? No, no, good. Um, but... I've got the, the study Bible, so everything that I read on there has like some kind of cross-reference in. And this reference is absolutely so much across the Bible. And one thing that I like so well is Matthew 6, 25, where it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is there not more to life than food and the body on your clothes? Look at the birds of the air. 
um, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can any of you be worrying at a single day to your life? Because I wrote down here, worrying what others think or worrying about what others do dilutes what God wants for you. And I, was, I had this analogy of black currant, of it's so concentrated and it's so strong. But the more you pour water into it, the more diluted it gets. Which leads me to another thing. People who don't know how to make black currant frustrates me. <laughs> um, uh, it's, not, it's not odd. But you know, if you go to someone's house and they just put way too much water in, you might as well just add water. But when we're worrying about things, it dilutes what God wants for you. And I want to be a church that is so concentrated, that is so focused on God, that is so willing to honor him in everything that we do, that we don't get frustrated about the things that we can't control. Because believe me, the more we walk in this world and the more things are going, there's going to be more things that frustrate us, more things that go against us, more things that we can't control, but it's our job to show that love, to show that purpose, to say, I stand in what God says I'm going to do, and we're going to now move forward from that one. Because if we spend so much time, like I've done in the past few years, of worrying about other things, worrying about, will I ever get my calling to do such and such? Will I ever get that opportunity? That person's holding me back. That person is doing that, so I can't get into there. All you do is just get yourself frustrated. And I was prophesied over probably about three years ago that I'd go for a frustrating period. And I've learned so much in that frustrating frustration, but it was the worst three years of my life. Where I've gone through stuff that I think, why is this frustrating? Why is this not working? Why is that person even in that level? And what I've realized is if I stop focusing on everyone else and just focus on myself, it gives God time to whisper and to talk to me like he wanted to talk to me. And you may need to look at you know, maybe what is distracting you. Where does God want you? Switch from being frustrated with others and get frustrated with about what the devil is robbing from others. Because God loves you so much more for you to be without your gift. And there's so much, so many of you in here that I know that God's going to take you to the next, next level. I get excited when I talk about church now. Not just because we've got a big building that we can you know, build a kingdom with. Just seeing every, each and every single one of you grow to move on to that next level. And I don't want that to, to halt us because there's certain things that may be niggling. I think we're just called to love. I think we're just called to, 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 to try and understand the other person's perspective and say, okay, maybe that's the way you think, but I'm going to choose to love. I'm going to choose the other way. Because uh, there's a great reward for those who obey him. There's a great reward. And I put in here, you know, the, the, the reward is heaven, but I don't think it's just that. I think it's making an impact on the world around us, a life of purpose and everything getting closer to him. You know, the, the, the famous, you know, line, because the rocks will cry out if we don't. Yeah. Nature, like I said earlier, was made in a way that honors him and we should be in that way as well. I don't want to spend, you know, however long on earth and not make an impact, to not enjoy my time here. We all know we're going to heaven and that's an exciting part. That's the excitement of we, we believe in what we do. But if that was just it, I'd be sat at home now. But we're here for a reason. We're here because God's got so much more. And I don't know, you know, where you've come from this morning. Whether you've come in maybe a little bit distracted. Maybe you don't know what your, your gift is. Maybe you don't know. Let's find out together. Let's, you know, build a community where we kind of try out different things. Maybe that's the prophetic team. Maybe that's, you know, getting involved in the prayer team or the worship team or the hosting team or coffee shop. And build a community together. Because... The more I realize is that we're not here for, for too long. And that's a bit of a depressing, depressing statement. But I think we should be enjoying coming to church, enjoying life, enjoying and not getting caught up with the mediocre things and on what kind of life those are. And that's pretty much everything that I had. Um, uh, so I hope that made some sense. But the heart is that, that God has got something big planned for us as a church. And it's so easy to get up and say that. And I, probably majority of churches say, you know, God's got more, but I genuinely believe it. And I think as I've gone through the last probably couple of months, I've realized that there's a perspective that we need to get as a church to where we go. The little things aren't going to bother us. We're focused on what's over there. 
and I was listening to a documentary and it says, what's more important, the destination or the journey? The destination is important, but the journey getting there is just as important. Because if we all of a sudden have 500 people come tomorrow, would we be ready? And my journey is, is and our journey is, is to slow step by step, love people, build small, get people on board, see people saved. And if we do that, if we see one person saved, one a year for the next 50 years, I believe we've done our job, but God wants more than that. God doesn't want to see us just, you know, slowly, you know, trying to figure it out on his own. If we've got him, things will move slow. And we've talked about this a lot, haven't we? Especially, you know, Andy and Julie, Nan and Granddad, but I'll call them Andy and Julie. We speak about this a lot, that God has got more. God has got far more for us. And it's all about intertuning with him, to getting involved with him, to... To, to, to get involved in worship, to, to love one another, to, to press forth. Do we believe that we've got more church? Because I genuinely believe it.